Good evening. Hello, everyone. I do apologise about the big shiny bar down there, but that is the um, overhead light. Um, I wonder if I should just remove that because it is a tad annoying. Let's see what it looks like without it. Give it a minute to catch up and we shall see. Yeah, that's a bit better. Uh, we'll use it without. I shall use it without. Hi, Andrine. How are you doing, lovely? I hope the weather's better where you are. It's absolutely pouring down here. So, let's see if that's a bit better. How it looks, it, doesn't it? Yeah. Looks like it's just me and you. Who only want to say hi? Does anybody else want to pop on and say hello? Good evening. We've got 14 watching. There we go. Here we all are. Must be my internet slow. Hi, everyone. Hi, Yvonne. Hi, Penny. Hi, Caroline. Okay. So I'm not going to keep you long. I have prepped quite a lot. But this is a really, really interesting one to do. Because um, you can do any size you want as long as you've got an envelope. Because I'm going to show you how to do the template for it. Um, I will be using... Julie's Daisies and um, the new ones and the Sweet Daisies, the older version as well. But this will work with any of Julie's florals, um, any of Julie's florals that you want to put in. Hi Linda, good evening. Um, so let's get started and then I won't keep you too long. You might even get a chance to watch your soaps. So we start off, I'll just put this out of the way because I don't need you just now. So, we start off with an envelope. Whatever size envelope you want to use is totally up to you because what we're going to do is make a template from it. So, actually, it's two envelopes. So, one, as you can see, is just straight up envelope. We leave it as it is. Don't do anything to that one. The second one, okay, as you can see, all I've done is remove the flap and cut down there. So, this part is actually that little bit that goes on the top there. OK, so um, those are the two pieces that we need and they are going to be your templates. So the next thing we want to do is bring in some really nice card. I've got 300 G uh, GSM for this. And what we need to do then is draw around the envelope. OK, draw around it and cut it out. Don't fold it. Don't score it. Morning, morning Wendy from Melbourne. Thank you for joining me. Uh, yeah, we just score it, you know, no scores are required. We want this piece. We do not want this piece that we're cutting out to fold. Okay, we want it to stand straight up like this. All right, and then the second one, this one, we're going to cut that part out a little bit later. And you'll see which bit we need to cut out when we get to it. So effectively what we're going to make is i haven't got the i haven't got the actual card i put a photograph on it, of it today but um julie julie had the card for as one of the samples i sent it to julie so if you remember when we made the um the last project that i did where we made a pocket to put the cards in you know in the in the card holder well that is effectively what we're going to do again here today we're going to make a pocket that sits around this back piece and then we're going to fill it as if it was a box okay so what we need to do is work out and this is what you will do with yours because i mean you might not use this size envelope you might use a smaller one or a larger one totally up to you so what you need to do is work out and i'll work it in inches because that's the easiest way of doing it so mine wears it mine measures seven and a quarter inches wide OK, so we need a pocket that's going to fold and fold and attach to the back, just like we did the pockets on the card holder. So the middle part of my piece of card measures the same, seven and a quarter. OK, and then I want two bits that come round. And if I hold it like this, you can see it there. I'll hold it up a bit. We need two pieces that, that come round and attach to this back piece to create the pocket. Now, 
this depth of it is up to you I've done it as an inch okay but if you want to you can just do half an inch so this one I've added so this part is seven and a quarter and then I've added an inch and then another inch so effectively I've added four inches to the side okay so it now measures 11 and a quarter across and then depth wise it's totally up to you but what I've done is I've put that piece on there like that and I've just left a little bit of an overhang at the top so because we're making a pocket and we've got inch increments there we need inch increments there to fold it all the way around so this piece of card for this size envelope and let me see what envelope it is I think it's actually a I think it's a a five by seven it started life as a five by seven envelope okay so we have got eleven and a quarter by seven and a quarter all right so this part's going to make the pocket that sits on the front part of that I hope you've got that I hope I'm not confusing anybody hi Judith hi Christine hi Yvonne hi Vanessa so if we put this piece of card that measures um, whatever it was I said, 11 and a quarter by 7 and a quarter, then what we need to do is score it at 1 inch and 2 inches on 3 sides, okay? So we've got 1 inch and 2 inch, turn it again, 1 inch and two inch right so there we go and now we're going to create the pockets and we do that in the usual way by removing this area here and this area here so that you leave just one of those little squares you can see what I've done I've took off two from there and one from there okay remove them and we do the same on the other side okay two of the squares from the side get removed and one from the bottom right, let me just trim that straight I am really useless with a pair of scissors there we go there we are so I'll just pop them back so you can see where they came from there we are so we've removed just those and now what we need to do is create a flap so we cut up that one there just to the score line above it hi Danny and that one there so these now become the little flaps that I took under to make the pockets okay so once you've got your score lines in you can burnish them all down really nicely there we are. so has anybody got any questions so far what are we making we're making the uh, the picture I put up today it's the um, envelope box card um, I haven't got one to show you because I sent it to Julie so these flaps then we add a little bit of glue on the inside part there and those are going to glue into that part you can see how it's coming together we're actually making a pocket okay so those can go in there. I'm just going to hold them a little bit. It's a bit cold tonight in here. And the glue doesn't seem to want to stick. And then we fold this in and these come down on there. Now, I think you've seen me do this before. Um, I've got a little mini stapler. Okay. And although I am going to glue these parts here, as well I'm going to pop a staple in to hold them down because obviously um, 
I may have a bit of issue with the glue and it makes things quicker for us. So make sure it's all squared up across the side and you're not going to see this staple. And pop a staple in it. Okay? Make sure the sides are all nicely squared up there. In you go. There we are. And once they're squared nicely, we can pop a staple in to keep that in place while we build the rest of it. There. Okay. So that's going to go on here. And one thing I didn't do, which I should have done, but it doesn't matter, I can do it now, is this here needs cutting out. Okay. So if you draw around this now on here, and we're going to trim it a little bit tighter in. So I'm going to draw it in pen so you can see it. Now, if I was you, I would do this before you pop it together. Okay, but I've made life a little difficult for myself, but hey ho. There we go. As long as I can see it, I can cut it. We're all right. Yeah, I have made life difficult for myself, have I not? There we are. We're going to trim this off. And this will create the front part of the envelope box. So I can trim it with a pair of scissors. It's all good. There we are. I would suggest you lay yours on and cut it out before you put it together. But just in case you forget, like I did, and then you can cut it out across here yourself. There we go. Now that creates the front envelope part where all your flowers are going to sit. So that is going to slide into the back of there and create the box for the envelope, as you can see. Okay, there we go. So all we need to do now is do some layering and matting with the, um, the papers. Now I've chosen to use Hazel's papers, okay, and all I did with this is put this template that we made onto there, okay, onto the paper, I drew around it and then I cut it out just on the inside of the line so that you're cutting it a little bit smaller so it fits on there, okay. Now it doesn't matter that it doesn't go right down to the bottom, that doesn't matter because you're not going to see that, that's going to be on the inside of the box. So first thing I'm going to do is glue that one on. It seems to be moving itself a bit better now, my glue. So put it on, and I've given myself just a little border. Put it on as uh, neat as you can. This is um, Hazel's uh, all weathered pad. I haven't got much of it left. I have used it, really, really used it on the last few things I've made. I do like it, it's really pretty. There we go. So, and it comes in loads of colours as well, loads of different shades. So that's going on there, and now we need to put this box uh, right down at the back and on the inside of there. Now, as you can see, you can see this, the workings of it, but that doesn't matter because we're going to put something over that to cover it, okay? So if you run glue along this edge, you can lie it flat against there. You can use red tape if you want to. Um, you can use double-sided tape if you want to. Don't run the glue too high up, so if you put lights next to each other like this, you can measure how high up you've got to put the glue. Okay, because a little bit of the envelope top does stick out, and you only need it on the sides. Okay, so we're going to push that right in, and we're going to line it up against the back. And once we've got it lined up, and it's flat, and it's in right against the bottom, we can put your hand in, and... Uh, And you can push it down with your hands. Okay. Make sure it's down and glued well. And now, so you can see the main size and sides of your box. Now, I mean, you can buy dies for this, but then that limits you to what size you can make. I prefer 
if I see things to have a go at it myself and see if it works out okay. And it has, it's worked out fine. You might have to make a box for it, it won't go in an envelope, but hey ho. So we need now to do something across the front. So I've got a piece of paper. And this is going to fit onto there, as you can see, quite nicely. So we need to draw around it, okay? And then we need to trim it just slightly on the inside of the line. So as you can see, this template works itself well in being able to get your mat and then your layering done and actual whole thing built, okay? So I can just about see that line, but I'm going to bring in a little green mat to cut on because I'm going to use a scalpel. Hi, Karen. Karen, could you do me a favour? Could you give Dawn the link? Because she's looking for it and she's texting me to say she can't find it. Could you just pop it on for her? Thank you. So I'm trimming it out with my blade. I find it easier to do it this way than use a trimmer. Because sometimes I mess up with the trimmer. I've got a, um, a sort of roller. You know the ones that roll a little on. I overshoot it or don't quite get it where I need it. So, we shall pop the cuts in, make it easier by doing it with a blade. Now don't worry too much if you don't get uh, this too exact, because we're going to put loads of flowers and everything on it. Right, remind yourself that I need to put me heat glue gun in. Thanks Karen. I'm just going to trim these out so we can't see the lines. If you draw them in pencil, then you're obviously going to be able to uh, rub them out. But I did them in pen so you can see where we're going. And I want a little border on this. There. There we are. So if you keep it straight on the front, line it up well, you're going to put lots of flowers down here. So it doesn't matter if you've lined it up dodgy, if you get my drift. And I have. <laughs> We're doing this because it's live. Okay. So, and then once this is down and it's drying, we'll move on to the flowers. Okay. Just make sure the bottom part's straight. Don't worry about the top too much. Okay. And if I'd aligned it up without trying to cut it out when it was all put together, that would have been absolutely fine. Okay. So I'll leave that there to dry for a minute. And we'll get on to the flowers. Now, I've made a lot of the flowers ahead because you do need a lot. Okay. And what I've used is, I don't know if you can see this. These are um, the two stamps I've used <clears throat> from Julie's Daisies. They're, they're the newest set. I will be using them again in a minute on the card at the back. So, And I've also pulled out some sweet daisies. Now, I've, I've used... I've made quite a lot. I don't think I'm going to use all of these, but I've got them anyway from various projects that I've made. I've got the larger versions. I've pulled out some of the leaves. And with the leaves, what I've done, as you can see, is I've um, trimmed into the leaves so that I've got threes and twos, sets of threes and twos of the leaves. Because um, that makes them go a little bit further when you're tucking them in and around. And I've coloured them in with Distress Inks, that's all. Very loosely, you know me, I like the, the loose watercolour look. I prefer that. And it's quicker. <laughs> so, and these are the smaller versions of, um, of the daisies. They're all on the same stamp sheet, okay? And I'm just gonna quickly show you how easy it is to colour these in, okay? I mean, if you wanna take ages and colour them all, Shade them all and I'll, 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 that's great. Um, that's a nice thing to do, sit and colour in flowers. But I was in a bit of a rush today, so I've just kind of done them this way. So the colours I've used are Peel Paint. I've used the Shaded Lilac on the smaller one. And I've used uh, Wilted Violet on the larger one. And as you can see, um, there's no real skill involved. I've just took a, a little brush... Let me move you up a bit because I seem to be out of shot. A little brush. 
I've stamped the daisies and I've cut into each each petal so once I put them on the, the actual box um, then I can you know manipulate them and all I've done is literally done that now that's come up darker because shaded lilac does dry a little lighter when it's dry it will dry that colour and that's all literally all I've done to colour all of those in these leaves I coloured in with a paintbrush and I used the same um, method to colour those as I've just done with that one I, I colour very loosely as you've already seen I'm sure so that's the flowers I'm just waiting for my glue gun to heat up it shouldn't be long um, I'll get a glue stick ready because I'm sure I'll need more than one there we are glue stick out the ready yeah it's ready it's hot so the only thing I need to do with that one I've just done now is put um, a jewel in the middle of it so I make sure that they're all been jeweled up I didn't use glossies this time because there's a lot of flowers and I didn't want to use them all up on one project so I used some old um, gems that I've had for a long time so I'm just popping a gem in the middle and strangely enough the gems on that one and that one are exactly the same but because of the colours in the background they seem to have uh, blended with the ink colours which is quite nice so there's all the flowers and then what you need to do then is bring in your envelope and work on the back so what this is is a five by seven card and that's going to go on there now if you've got papers extra papers i haven't you can put papers on the back there and cover that you know you can you can put some cover on it if you want to but i'm not going to you can carry on and do that yourself i'm just going to put or you i suppose yeah i think i'll do that i'll cut a piece of white card and put it over the top and then you won't see any of the workings at all so i shall do that just to neaten it up because like i said i'm very short on on um hazel's papers to be able to do this so let me just measure it and we're going with seven and a half by five and three quarters so i've got myself a piece of my card i can glue it on by five and three quarters and that should cover up any mess that's there providing i have yeah that's more or less it that'll do i think that will cover up the mess there we go yeah i'm just going to take a little nip off the edge obviously my measuring skills are not that good today must be the weather hiya dawn have you found it excellent there we go so i'll just cover this up like i said if i was you i'd use some nice card or paper to cover it up there we go there we are that's that bit covered and all i'm going to do with this now is on the back i'm going to put a five by seven card blank and then that when you send it will help it to stand up okay so i'm just going to mount the whole card bank blank on the back ready and that can be drying while we are doing the flowers do it so that the bottom is flush with the bottom of the box okay and then that way it will stand as you can see it stands up so we'll leave that as is this is to go on the card in a minute and we'll start with the flowers how you arrange them is totally up to you okay so what i think i did was i put three big ones to start with on there and then i kind of interspersed them with the small ones so we'll go with that to start with i'm going to use hot glue okay because it's quicker for me but use what you want um, it just makes the, the live flow a little bit quicker if your glue gum is working that is there we are. now it will so 
So I'm just going to hot glue them on. And then a few of those in between. You want a good a good amount of flowers because then it looks, you know, it's nice when the box looks full. Yeah. Once they're dry, you can manipulate them. Okay. I hope you can all see this. Let's move it up a bit. There we are. Fit them in. See, as you can see, that's why it's not too, but you know, this, this project just doesn't have to be too perfect because you are covering the majority of it up. So it's important to get this bit right more than the top. So we've started there and now you just start to build up the flowers on the inside here. Okay, so it's up to you if you want to go right up to the top, you know. Um, I've got some of these daisy ones as well, so they can stick behind here because there's a stem on them. You can pop them in and actually physically glue them to the back of here. So they stand up proud sort of thing. I'll leave that one. I'll put that one, maybe that one on that side. And you're gluing on the front part here. There we are. And this is all you do then, is then start to build up your flower box. Not difficult. And there's a lot of prep been done on this one. But, you know, if you take your time over a couple of nights, you can get the flowers made, no problem. So once you've got this second layer on, then you can work out where your third layer is going to go up here etc and your fourth layer and all the rest of it and you just keep building until you've got enough flowers in here to suit your needs so i'm just going to turn this around so i can see where i'm gluing them okay just pop a few on you could even attach some with acetate on the back so that the um they put you know they sort of pop along the front part you know give yourself a bit more dimension for it but as you're looking at the box there you know flat you can just fill in the gaps <clears throat> with what you've got left basically so we did use quite a few flowers but some of them are quite small from the daisy so if you were using a different set you might not need to use so many there we go now I might pop that one in there because I can. Just build that part at the back there so there's an actual gap. And I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it as high as I'm gonna go. So the ones that I've got left you can either put further down or keep for a different project. And seeing as I've got them, I'm gonna use them. Just look into your box and see if there's a gap, and if there's a gap pop a flower in so then it means you're looking at it as if the whole box is full of flowers there we are in there too and we've got one more gap inside that once it was standing up you would see so i'm gonna tie that one in it'll be easier for you to see when you're doing your own what's what there we go now so all the flowers are placed just need to place some leaves and as I said I've cut them in they start off life like this okay like one full set and I've just trimmed into them and took them into two little sets um, and then what I'm going to do is now slide them in and around and underneath the flowers okay so that you've got a bit of leaves popping out so it's not just a whole bunch of flowers, it's got some leaves too. So put them, thread them underneath your box of your flowers, underneath there. Once you put them, I'm a bit pedantic in what I put on one side, I kind of like to put on the other side. So um, it looks a little uniform. I kind of like that. I like it if the design's coming in from both sides, looking the same. Okay. So, I mean, I might even snip into these even further and take ones out, you know, 
to uh, yep through there to just add separate ones in there we are on there that was a three so I'll put a three in here I guess you're getting the gist does anyone have any questions while I'm gluing leaves in there we are right so now we've got some separate twos I'm going to start up here and popping them in at the top yeah. can't see any questions thanks Dawn yeah. and now I'm going to start putting separate ones in I think we need some separates maybe seem to have lots of leaves don't we right some separate ones sticking out at the back here I think you might have to trim some of the stalks off so you won't dig behind put one there put one in there I do want one the bottom here underneath this one that's it maybe there should be two who knows need to put another one it's a good thing about these though but you can just trim into them can't you yeah yeah needs another one there so yeah, I do have massive issues trying to do random there you go that looks better have a look at it yeah, I can see some spaces at the back that needs just a couple more, I feel. Single ones. So let's trim some more out. And I'm going to lift it up and pop a couple in here. Yeah, okay. Just build it. And then I'm going to stop and work on the back. Any spaces that you can see that might require a, a leaf, pop one in. There we are. And one there, I feel. There we go. I'm just going to leave it at that. I could put some of the sides here, but I'm just going to leave it at that for now. Okay. There we are. So, the front of it is almost done. I've just got a sentiment to put in it. And you've got your card at the back there. I'm working too far down so you can't see me. Right, so what I've done for this now is I've cut a piece of... It's not exactly the same paper. The front paper had wider uh, spaces, but it doesn't matter. It's all, it's all the same colour tone. Or you could even use the corresponding, which is on the back of the, this particular one. But I'm going to use the thinner uh, panels... On this and I've cut it with a slight border not much of one but a border nevertheless all the way around so it's on your card front because obviously there's nowhere no way to write anything on the front of this box so if you've got a card on the back you can write your message inside of there which is which is handy and then what I've done is I've used Julie's happy birthday profile die and I've cut the um, back in place in white and then I turned the paper over and you saw the lilac and I cut the happy birthday in the lilac so we're going to put that on in a minute as well but what I think I might do I'll just see if, it, if I fancy it I'll do it on the card first and see how it works um, maybe it doesn't need it maybe it does but on the other one that I did I'll try it with the small one first. On the other card that I did, I put a little bit of stamping um, on it just to add a little bit more interest. So I think I might just do that here. Um, if I did it in grey, you probably wouldn't see it. So I'm going to put it on in black. And I'm just going to... And I don't mind if it doesn't all stamp fully, okay? Because I'm going to pop 
happy birthday across it anyway just to add a little bit of something something on there yeah so you can do all this before you uh i just want it in the background really you can do all this before you put your paper on but i decided to do it last minute so just a little bit of something let's hope it works there we go and i want to put some stenciling on as well so this paper um i think the nearest color to it really is wilted violet which is that one so we're going to go with that first and see if you can see the stenciling through it and if you can't we'll just go in with a darker color you might be able to see it yeah you can see a little bit of it and little patches here and there of it just gives a little bit of an extra item in the background and i'm going to pop happy birthday across there with the flower maybe pop there or pop there after all that stamping i'm going to pop it there and i've got a leaf to put on it as well just in case so you know you've got some i didn't do the best job of stamping on there so yeah let's cover it up but you've got some different things you can do to it you can put the stenciling on you can you can just see that so the wilted violet is a really good colour to put on that. I will take a photo of it and you'll be able to see it. Um, and I think actually Hazel did, if I remember rightly, Hazel did ha make these in the colours that match the distress inks, which is really good for us because then most of us have got distress inks, haven't we? Uh, so it'll uh, you've got something to correspond with it I'm sure there we go so that's on the back and that will stand up as you see and then on the front all that's left to do is a little tiny bit of stenciling if you wish and seeing as we've got it on the back why not just put it in a couple of areas tuck it under put a little bit on here yeah, you can see it nicely there, I hope. A little bit on here. I left the stencil until last because sometimes it doesn't need it. There we are. And what's that? Three bits of stenciling. And then what I've done is I've made the tag from the... Um, Sweet Daisy set. I've cut it out with the dies and then I've mat matted and layered it another couple of times just to make it a little bit bigger. Okay. Why is it happy birthday? Why is birthdays happy? What's the wrong way around? Oh, so it is. <laughs> Do you know what? <laughs> Honest to God. I'm having one of them days, girls. There we are. Thank you for telling me. That would have been a silly card to send out to someone. There we are. <laughs> Thank you, Penny. Thank you, Dawn. <laughs> Quick before it's dry. Honestly, what am I like today? Oh, mine's not on the job, clearly. There we are. Happy birthday. <laughs> and then on the front, I've put, have a lovely day. There we go. It would have been a really bad day, wouldn't it, if I'd have sent that card out with birthday happy on. There we go. <laughs> there you go. So, we learned how to do a template. It is very easy, as you can imagine, um, when you apply yourself a bit more than I have tonight, then uh, it is very easy. But there you are. Life's life. So, I don't think that we have, I, well, I know I certainly, I don't have I ever done anything that makes sense, really, you know, ever, ever, ever. So, I have not got any more lives planned, because obviously it's the week before Christmas. Um, I don't think Philippa has, I'm not sure about Julie, whether Julie's got another live, but keep your eyes on Julie Hickey Designs, and obviously if there's another live, I'm sure it'll come up. 
I'll take a couple of pickies of this now, get rid of these strings from the glue gun and uh, and I'll, I'll pull the flowers up a bit as well because once they dry properly I'll do that. So that's how you make an envelope card, okay, with happy birthday on the back. Okay ladies, thank you for watching and thank you for correcting my mistakes <laughs> and um, all that's left now is to wish you all a Merry Christmas. I hope you have a lovely time with your family and friends making memories and I will see you back in the new year, I'm sure, for another live. Okay, thanks for joining me guys. Bye bye.